I don't think it's China versus Libra. I think it's the renminbi versus the U.S. dollar. I mean, it's no secret that the, the, the Chinese government has huge aspirations for the renminbi. And, you know, five years ago, you guys will remember this, the talk of the renminbi being the future trade currency and the internationalization mm-hmm. of the renminbi was everything that was being talked about. And that's kind of, although, you know, the Hong Kong, London, Toronto have emerged as renminbi trading centers or offshore renminbi centers, that transition to renminbi really hasn't happened. And and there's historical reasons for that. I mean, the fact that oil is still priced in U.S. dollars gives U.S. dollars, you know, uh, quite a bit of strength in the U.S. government. And then the fact that U.S. government has the largest military, et cetera, et cetera, you know, all these macroeconomic reasons. But Mm. one of the aspects of Libra is that it's going to be backed by a reserve of multiple different currencies. And by any estimation, you know, 30 to 50 percent of that could potentially be the U.S. dollar. And so that would further entrench the U.S. dollar as kind of a global reserve currency and and take away the importance of the renminbi. Because I think if the renminbi is part of that Libra basket, it's going to be a very small percentage as compared to the other the other currencies like the pound or the Japanese yen or the euro that might be in there. Mm. Um, So so I think it's not so much a China versus Libra, but a, a China versus U.S. dollar when we look at the competition angle of, of Libra and digital currency. Well, that's that's kind of a point that I was going to make as well. I mean, like if, if China can develop and deliver a digital currency uh, as well as, let's you know, a plug and play infrastructure for that, for financial centers, for other governments uh, in terms of bond trading or, or what have you, it seems that actually if they can do that fast enough, then, then it's actually going to be, you know, it really good for them in terms of in terms of competition against the USD. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think we're. The, I mean, this really expands the conversation. But if you look at the Belt and Road Initiative, a significant amount of the lending that's going out through that initiative is coming from either either Chinese institutions or multilateral institutions in China or funds that have been set up by China, like the Silk Road Fund. And a lot of that lending is in renminbi, and it's. I mean, one of the aspects is that that many of the construction companies and and infrastructure companies that are involved in BRI projects, Belt and Road projects in the destination countries happen to be Chinese companies. So they're they're more willing to take renminbi. But, you know, with a lot of the funding going out as renminbi, that's that's one of the stated goals of the government as well. So, you know, there's no there's no clear silver bullet for making the renminbi a, a, a global reserve currency on par with U.S. dollars. But the the Chinese government is doing everything it possibly can to make that happen, whether it be BRI or, or central bank digital currency or setting up these reserve centers in in Hong Kong, London, Toronto. You know, they're really trying hard, and they're 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 doing pretty much everything they can. There's very few very few avenues left for them to really push that forward. But I, I think certainly that is one of the big considerations. <laughs> 